rocking motion, our first move. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Inhale towards me and either seated or standing, whatever you're doing here, you want to also begin to feel a figure eight, which is the infinitus, infinity symbol. It pulls the energy from the earth here at the bottom. The palms go up. And as the palms turn over and move down, it's bringing the energy back to the earth. It's kind of a recycling move of the inhale and then the exhale. Long exhales are said to be very restorative in terms of finding a really good relaxation pose for all our moves. So this kind of open rocking forward and rocking back is also something that's really great. You're coming to the balls of the feet on the inhale, you're moving back towards the heels on the exhales and the toes will only rise when you move back and the heels will rise as you move forward. So connect that because in the middle, there's a little bit of sinking for your rocking chair that you're becoming. You'll often see people doing this on the street when they're waiting for the bus because it's grounding, it's relaxing. You don't want to wait and just do nothing. <laughs> for those of us that need to move, this is a really nice kind of way to relax. I've also found this is great in airports. And one more here. We usually do about nine, but you can go to 27 or 36, any multiple of nine. Nine is the noble number in Chinese numerology. So we honor that. Our next warm up move is called bird flaps its wings. The feet are in a V, they come close together, but do not touch so that when you drop down here, after you inhale, the knees gently move out and the knee is not going beyond the big toe. So there's this connection there. You only drop down a few inches. And then the third one of each set of three of bird flaps its wings, and there are three sets. You do a wrist circle forward, just one, the bird's learning to fly, so he's on the edge, he or she is on the edge of a branch here. It's a little bit faster out than it is coming back, so the flapping of the wings is probably a little timid bird <laughs> trying to show its mother, yeah, I will learn to fly, just be patient. That's the second set. Now we have one more set. And back to rest, inhale and release. Bird flaps its wings has only three sets of three. It's also a warm up, as was rocking motion. Our next move is um, around the platter. So we're going to first prepare by going through our side to side weight shift for a moment. This can be done seated if you like. Not the weight shift, but the next move. And I'm going to come over here to the right, to your right. You're gonna release your left heel. The back foot's 45 degree angle, front foot's directly out from the hip. You start with your palms like this right at the sternum or breastbone, and you're gonna move out on the inhale towards me and back slowly on the exhale. 
And there's a circle in front of you. A platter, as a fa- in matter of fact, it's called around the platter is the move. We do this nine times on a side. Two more. Last one. Good. Bring that foot back. Your left comes back in. You always will start on your left. I mirror you on my right. But I'm speaking for you just to make sure that I'm opposite your leg. Now you're going to shift all your weight to the left side. Bring your right heel forward. Square the hips when you begin by placing your thumbs on the hips there. Good. Lengthening through the spine. Bring your palms right opposite your Tarzan's move there. Ha ha. That's where it is. The sternum. And now you're going to move outside that right foot with your circle. As you come forward, you bend the front knee. As you come back, you bend the back knee. The opposite leg will automatically straighten. Good. Inhaling forward towards me and exhaling back with your platter away from me. Good. And that'll enable you to do a full shift. Three more. Last one. Good. Bring that foot back in. Inhale to release. Shift towards your right now. We just did that. Now shift back over to the left, right? So we just did the right side. Now we're going to shift again to the right side. Release the left leg forward because we're coming into around the platter variation. And the variation will be to pick up a ball of energy on your left side and drop it halfway around the circle to bring the energy to the back foot. And it's all very soft, continuous, flowing. And this move is very circular. <laughs> you've got two circles. You've got a circle here, the palms facing each other. You've got a circle here, which is the platter. And everything is essentially in polarity. Here, the palms are in polarity with their connections from the center. And here, the palms are in polarity as they face the earth has a polarity there. And one more. And the platter stays pretty even that way with the heel of the hand. Inhale and exhale. Shift towards your left. Release your right. Prepare your platter and pick up your ball of energy at your right shoulder around the platter variation right side. A little bit slower, we need to go. That makes our weight shift work better if we have a feeling of gliding through the center and then releasing the heel and back. Gliding through the center and then releasing the toe in front. Beautiful. That's much slower. That's really good. (laughs) Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Can you feel the difference? It's just um, so much smoother feeling inside. 
two more. When we finish a move, we say, um, this has come into a graceful conclusion. So I think we did it. We came to a graceful conclusion of around the platter variation. And literally for everything, whatever you're doing, usually takes about 20 minutes before in a long practice, you feel totally connected. So we're there, I think now. And now we come into our next move, which is bass drum. So finding your hands on your hips again, let's do a side to side for a couple of minutes, not a couple of minutes, a few seconds here. Good. And now we're gonna shift over to your right side over here. And then we drop the heel up your left. Bring the palms outside of the breasts here. So for women, we need to make allow for whatever is there. And I would suggest that we go to the outside of them. Here's the inhale. And here's the exhale as the palms come back and the elbows come back with the hips. Notice that. Your bass drum that you have is fairly big and it's moving through a fairly wide circle of energy around your body here. So if you really wanna feel that energy, inhale here towards me and exhale back away from me. And that'll also improve your shift. That's called the connecting the energy C to the weight shift makes all the difference. In feeling the chi, you need to feel that connection to the breath. Let's do three more of these on this side, and then we'll move to the other side. You always start with your left. To mirror you, I have to start with my right, so sorry about that. <laughs> And one more here. Good, we'll bring that left foot back in for you. We inhale here, turn the palms over and exhale out. We shift towards your left foot. All the weight is now over on this side. We release the right heel and we prepare for bass drum. Lengthen through the spine first feeling the crown of the head at the back of the skull connected all the way through, cervical, neck, spine, uh, thoracic, your upper spine, and low spine here, all the way through the Ming Men, lumbar spine. Bass drum right side. And now ask yourself, are you really feeling the Qigong breath now? If the jaws dropped a little bit, you might feel your tongue close to the upper palate by the upper teeth. And um, it's kind of comforting to be able to release the jaw there. The face gets very relaxed. You can still breathe in through the nostrils. And some people also feel they breathe through their mouth on the exhale. I don't do that too much on Zoom because it's very noisy, but outside I do. <laughs> I breathe through my mouth a lot because it increases my energy. I like it. And last one on your right side. Bass drum will come to a graceful conclusion here as we inhale and we exhale to ground. And we'll double ground it. It's a wonderfully 
connected move to your breath, I think. And this hands are so simple because you have the same thing on both sides. All right. Our next move that we have in this 19 movements in one pose after bass drum is daughter on the mountaintop followed by daughter in the valley. So dropping down here, shifting towards your right, releasing your left heel. Palms are gonna come up in a circle in front of you and your left hand will channel the heart here. So it comes behind as you cross the wrists. In meditation, everything is honoring the heart, including the breath, it's the breath, the movement, and your mind work from the heart. That's why being able to slow down our heart rate is so important. It slows down our so slows down our panic attacks for one thing you know if you just get nervous this is a really great move to do just do it really slowly daughter on the mountaintop and make sure that your shift is long glide through the middle release the back heel glide back release the front toe feel those connections one more here of daughter on the mountaintop. Bring the foot back in. Basically we inhale to exhale, right? And then you wanna really extend this grounding, even though it's a simple single grounding, slow exhale. Shift it over towards your left side and prepare for a round, I'm sorry. <laughs> Daughter on the mountaintop on the next side, on your right side. Yeah, you are moving into parasympathetic nervous system now because this is a lot of slow movement. So that's why I think it's important to use the single grounding to realize you just finished your left foot. And now you're on your right foot. Good, really slow. I see at least one of you is sitting and that's great. You can certainly do this sitting. Even if you do a little bit of this, if you've got homework to do or a paper to write, just take time out to do Daughter on the Mountaintop, Daughter in the Valley. It's always been favorites of mine. We have two more on this side, on your right side now. Last one, daughter on the mountaintop. Come back to double grounded, inhale and release. And we'll do that again, that same inhale here. Notice how your palms are up, turn them over. Exhale down, you're exhaling down towards the ground. Beautiful. And now we have our companion move, which is daughter in the valley, starting on top of the mountains. There are two of them between, with the valley in between. You bring your left heel forward and you come through the valley, making sure that your foot in the back is 45 degree angle to your front. Inhale here through your front foot. Exhale back. Nice. You probably feel the chi at this point, at least I do. It seems to move through the center of the body as I move forward. And as I exhale back, it opens out as if I'm looking over the view at the top of one of those two mountains, or maybe I'm on the top of the valley, I'm not sure which. I know there's mountains on both sides of me and I've just come up through the valley when I inhale forward.
It's just like if you do a lot of hiking, it's, it really is like the view from the top here. When you come up here on the inhale and you go, wow. Two more after this one. Daughter in the Valley. After nine, we finish on the left side. We bring the foot back. We inhale and exhale to ground it. Shift towards the left side, release the right leg. Start on top of the mountains, right up here above your shoulders, and come down to inhale forward, releasing the back heel, exhaling back to release the front toes. Nine times, by this time we've got the chi moving, we are in synchronicity. Everything is moving together, including the breath. Three more. Last one. Good, return that leg back. Inhale to release. And it's a good idea to double ground it because your mind is getting so relaxed now, you won't remember unless you have some things that you do like this. All right, good. So we've now closed Daughter in the Valley. And our next move is the joyous, carry the ball to the side. So we come over here, we do three times three to get over to that left side. Picking up a ball of energy here, move your hips to the left, I'm sorry, to the right. And then you're going to pick up your heel here, your left heel, and move over. Inhale to release the sinking, rising part of this. You've just sunk a little bit. Your Ming Men is coming up straight with the spine. So watch the back there that you don't stick the butt out. And <laughs> you're going to come across again. Bring in the other side foot. And one more here, three times three. Carry the ball to the side and notice how the weight shift is basically pulling it over to this side. Sink it, wind up, and we'll go back. Bring in the outside foot and sink. Two more. And let's do one more just for fun. Good. And let's go back towards the sunflower, okay? Wind up over here, bring out your left heel and move across towards your left. And watch how relaxed you can get your wrists, almost like you're a sea anemone or you're, you're moving seagrass here. So the ball is kind of amorphous. And last one. B 
Beautiful. I always say beautiful because I think it's such a beautiful feeling to do this. All right. We're going for the feeling rather than the perfection, right? So on the next one, we're going to be doing a reverse breathing practice. We'll look at the circle as you move the fingers down and up and around to return to your heart. Everything, remember, starts from the heart and returns from the heart. Exhale and inhale back. Beautiful circle, nice. Come forward with the heel of the hand, come up with the fingers, turn the palms around, bring them back towards you as if you're breathing there. So exhale out, turn the palms around and inhale back. Yes, okay. Now we're gonna add the weight shift. Exhale down, push, pull, or giving and receiving energy. And on Zoom, we can definitely have fun with this. So make sure, I'm gonna be making sure you can see my feet. Exhaling forward, inhaling back. Of course, you have to inhale before you exhale. So inhale there and then exhale. Then inhale back. If you're not sure whether you're ex exhaling or inhaling, you can also add the funnel breath, which is this. Inhale like you're whistling or sipping with the straw and then whistle out. Yeah, and then you can change it into a nostril breath if your, knees, if your nose is clear. And then releasing the jaw, you can add the fact that it could be the Qigong breath with the tongue close to the upper palate there. It's easy to just relax the facial muscles and do that. And a little inner smile, because it's fun. That's so nice, looks really good. You're seated, one of you is seated anyway. Good. <coughs> Last one after this. Good, slide that left foot back. We'll single ground this for a moment here. Let's inhale up to the heart. Exhale it down. Shift towards that left side. Bring the palms forward, bring the right heel forward for push, pull, or giving and receiving energy. That's really lovely. Good rhythm. Nice, slow connection energetically. Two more. Yeah, this is the only reverse practice, reverse breathing practice we have, which is in this push pull move. It's the only one marked that way. So now we bring the right heel back in, inhale it. Double ground this move, it's fairly energetic. And our next move will be pulling in the energy from the farthest star in the universe. So here you're gonna just, let's do our side to side weight shift again because we're moving quite slowly now, so you need to keep the body limber at the hips and low back place where people have to get a problem. All right, now we're gonna shift over to the right side, bring our palms up 
as if we're asking for alms or something like that. You know, you're asking for something. You're asking for energy from the farthest star in the universe. So this is called pulling in the energy. And it also involves a visualization. At night, when we look at the stars, or the ancients certainly would have done that a lot. They wouldn't have had electricity. So fire and the stars were it. Notice there's a lot of circularity here. This is a big circle. It's moving out from the heart. It's asking for, pleading for something from the farthest stars, maybe more energy, more understanding, more generosity, whatever it is you need in your life, you can ask this here. More patience. Last one on your left side. Bring the foot back in. Inhale to exhale. Single grounding between sides, shifting towards your left side. Release your right, pulling in the energy right side. Notice how it begins from the heart and it's asking. So here you're inhaling. It's a beautiful circle as you inhale and ask for energy from the farthest star in the universe through your fingertips. Inhaling forward, slowly exhaling back, gliding through the center and then releasing the heel, gliding back and then releasing the toe. And last one of pulling in the energy. Beautiful, bring that right leg back. Inhale to ground and double ground. We'll take a moment to hydrate here, drink some water, and then we'll continue right away with our Next, energetic moves, which are the taffies. <clears throat> Coming back into Tadasana, your mountain pose. Once more, take a deep breath. Belly, rib cage, upper chest. On your inhale and exhale down, collarbones, exhaling down through the upper chest, rib cage, abdomen. One more. Good. Now that we finished the mountain pose for a moment, we're going to begin with our basic taffy. Dropping down. Left hand under the right elbow, <clears throat> left heel out to, the, to this side and moving the energy through the weight shift as you separate the palms. Inhale to ground, which means an exhale there. And coming out back to the other side, there's a lot of sinking and rising. Here's the inhale. The inhale happens as you rise to ground. And you sink to exhale and begin again, pulling the energy between the palms. I always love the fact that the hand that's underneath is moving up. And the hand that was on top is moving down. It's such a beautiful kind of connection energetically. 
that the one is actually always supporting the other. They're just opposites. Basic taffy, it's kind of sticky between the palms as they come apart. That's where the taffy came in, like a sticky candy. But it could just be something like heavy air that you're moving through. The palms never touch, so we know it's something to do with energy. Personally, I feel that at my core, so I inhale here. I feel that the core pulls in as I exhale through that. I'm using my abdominal muscles a little bit. Gives me a stronger grounding in my feet when I do that. Which for the senior body is very important. You know, as we climb stairs, as we climb up hills, we need to be able to use our core strength. Let's do one here and then we'll go back to begin our first variation of basic taffy. So we'll inhale here to extend up through the spine and exhale to ground it. And now we're going to begin our next move, which is um, anchor taffy. You anchor your right leg. Anchor your right leg, which means it won't move. It'll stay right there. You're going to bring the left heel forward and your left hand will be underneath the elbow as you pull the taffy. So forward shift followed by a side to side basic taffy shift. Other leg comes forward, pull the taffy. And then side to side taffy. Good, so that was anchor taffy. Our next variation, our second variation is circles taffy. It's kind of like a rain, um, a raindrop. So you're dropping down like this. And then you have to wind up and go back to basic taffy. And it's got a lot of sinking and rising. So st stand up straight first, inhale, feet are in a kind of a V and you're gonna sink rise, come to the balls of the feet, sink, rise, come to the balls of the feet, sink. Now wind up here, bring the left heel under, left hand under and the left heel out and move across with your circles taffy. Sink, rise. Third one, wind up, move the opposite way. Inhale to rise and sink to exhale. <laughs> and then begin again. A couple more. Last one. Inhale to rise, sink to exhale and ground. And let's double ground it. These are all energetically very fun. And our third. Variation is perpetual motion taffy with heel step.
the heel comes up off the floor, you're flexing the foot and you drop heel through the center of the foot and then the front of the foot, a little bit like our Buddhist walk that we started at the beginning of the practice. The heel, then the middle of the foot, then the front of the foot. Your feet are in a V here, just to be safe. Knee, hip, ankle need to track each other so that you don't torque anything. It's fairly safe if you do this slowly. Perpetual motion taffy with heel step. It's just a wonderful kind of move. And we'll do two more. One here and then one back. Beautiful. Now inhale to lengthen and exhale to sink. Sinking and rising. Let's do one more, double ground it. So nice. Okay, our next move is going to be the, the one of this one. <laughs> What's it called? Um, you're doing this beautiful working the pulley. The left hand's coming forward. You're coming forward with a shift and you're making sure that the ankle, the hip, and the knee are all moving together because you're going across body. It's a cross body move. It's a little bit like swimming because this hand comes forward, the palm comes up, the other hand moves forward, the palm comes up as you move it back. Kind of like a beautiful crawl stroke in heavy surf. And you might wanna bring the feet closer together so that you don't effort this too much. I like to um, move the heel across in front and the back ball of the foot across, sliding from the back ball of the foot and sliding on the heel when I'm on a carpet. It really depends on your surface and what you have on your feet. Rubber shoes are hard, but if you're seated, I think you can work out something with this too. So just don't fall off your stool or chair. <laughs> Okay, we'll say that that's good for the left side here. Now I'll bring the left foot back. Inhale to ground it for a moment. Bring your left hand under the hip bone, your right hand out from the heart, your right heel forward, and prepare to shift forward and cross the body. And on Zoom, the lovely thing is you can touch someone's shoulder, even though they're not in the same room with you. I think Zoom is a great educational tool. It's just um, demands some equipment, which hopefully in the next few years, we'll figure out how everyone can have it. Right now, it feels like what they must have felt like when someone invented the light bulb, right? <laughs> it's like a whole new invention, and uh, education has a lot to figure out here. Let's do one more here of working the pulley, a beautiful cross-body move, which on Zoom can be done without having someone in the room. You can touch their shoulders. It's really cool. Let's... Double ground this one. As we come into our final movements, the first being light at the top of the head, light at the temple. Feet are in a V, inhale the palms up. The light, your light will be a round circle up here that you create and you're gonna sink and rise and let it go. And then you hold the palms close together. 
you feel that light right at the back of the crown of the head and you circle the palms three, six or nine times. Hold the energy again, inhale it and sink and rise with it, feet in a V. Let it go, coming to the balls of the feet, sinking. Three times. And then you let it go here. Release it down. Inhale the left hand close to the heart, up through the central meridian. Sink it down on the exhale. And preparing for joyous breath, bring your feet into a V. Inhale. Exhale everything out. <clears throat> Come up to the balls of the feet. Sink down on the third one. Let the heels touch the ground. And slowly sink it through the earth on your exhale. We'll double ground this one as we move into passing clouds. All things change. Your right hand is up and now it's moving down. Your left hand is moving under, almost touching the elbow if you like. Feet are in a V and they're on the ground, or if you're seated, you're feeling this connected to your sits bones as well as the movement. Perhaps with a stool that's just comfortable for your feet to touch the ground, but you can always add something under there so that they do touch the ground. Very good, now we'll just close this move. Bring in your right foot, inhale. Sink everything through the earth for a moment. And we'll move into six healing sounds, which I have right here. And they are ho for the heart, who for the spleen, Su for the liver, sh for the lungs, she for the triple heater, and tri for the kidneys. Your left hand will be first and your left foot. We'll say them first. Ho, who, su, sh, right hand, right foot. She, tree, now aspirated. Second again. Third one, five trees. Heel step. Turn the palms over. Mixing the energy of yin and yang, yang and yin. Feeling all those energies as they've mixed up and come together in this beautiful practice of Tai Chi Chi. Bringing your left heel to your right ankle bone, coming into cosmic consciousness pose, awareness of the world, awareness of yourself as your own teacher or Satguru, we say in yoga. 
and you inhale, releasing the fingers to actually bind them, bring them over the head in a circle of gratitude for almost 5,000 years of Qigong, five centuries or six centuries of Tai Chi and the work of Wen Shan Wang, famous teacher from China who was in LA in the 60s and early 70s, and the work of Justin Stone to create Tai Chi Chi, 19 movements in one pose in 1974. With gratitude towards all of you who do this practice, and thank you so much for being with me today. Have a wonderful week. In yoga, we say namaste.